Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and may I thank Radfest for the invitation to us to exhibit here and have the opportunity now to talk to you a bit about ourselves. Um, please bear with me because I've walked in here and I've realised I've made an error. I've been thinking along one set of lines about what to talk about, and I'm going to slightly change the talk and what I was doing. I'm going to talk to start with about us, who we are, why we are, and what we do. And then I'm going to also talk about one particular product of ours, the peptide bioregulators. And hopefully you'll realize why I've drawn them out and I've separated them a bit later on. But you're talking about personalized medicine and they can help towards that, amongst other things. Sorry, is that better? Can you hear me a lot better? I'm a bit used to people actually normally hearing me without use of a microphone. My apologies for that. Okay. Um, okay, so who are we? We're International Anti-Aging Systems, or IAS for short. And as the introduction said, we specialize in the sourcing of uh, the difficult to obtain uh, hormones, medicines, and uh, supplements from around the world, and we supply around the world. The United States is our largest market, and we are, as such, an international offshore pharmacy. That means for you in the United States or in Canada or elsewhere, outside of the EU, we can obtain prescription products for you without a prescription. We also are able to very often supply those products to you at a lower cost than what you can obtain them through insurance in the United States. We are not a compounding pharmacy. So what we have is stock item. Um, as I mentioned, we've been around for 26 years, over a quarter of a century. Uh, and we've been responsible for introducing a lot of your cutting edge leading products. Things like oxytocin, uh, can see eye drops for dissolving cataracts, metformin, to name three. Um, over the time, we've, um, uh, sorry, um, our goals are to be able to obtain these products for you so that you are able to continue to enjoy them. And when a product such as um, uh, hydrocortisone stops production, we've actually found a manufacturing source and had it produced under our own brand so that you, the patient, the consumer, are able to continue with such products. That's, we aren't necessarily always the most popular people with your um, pharmace pharmaceutical uh, people. So they don't always like us and we have a few problems from time to time. Um, I will very briefly mention the peptide bioregulators because they're one of the more recent products that we've introduced as a cutting edge product. I will talk further about it a bit later. Suffice to say that they, are, they were, until a few years ago, classified as a Russian military secret. They go back over 40 years and they have over 15 million case studies of treatments, all of it in Russia, but increasingly outside of Russia and in the United States. And there are people attending today's conference who are prescribing and using those peptide bioregulators. And they have told me, oh, I'll quote one or two of the stories to you a bit later, but some of the results they've been getting from their use. More recently, some of our more recent products, still peptide, but not the peptide bioregulators. So we've recently introduced a sleep peptide. We've introduced a uh, mouthwash peptide, and we'll soon have a uh, toothpaste peptide, which combined with a mouthwash peptide should enable remineralization of your teeth and work towards resolving gum disease. Um, in terms of uh, other aspects, uh, we've also have uh, again another new product called Joint Pro Peptide, uh, which, as the name suggests, is for the joints. It helps to cure your joints jo uh, and pain in your joints, rebuild, help with rebuilding your joints. And we've also very recently launched a supplement called 4MU for prostate cancer. Again, um, there's been a lot of research in this in Europe, and uh, Jonathan Wright has done a lot of the background research for us in its use and everything like that. It's, that's a product we launched about two weeks ago, so it's very new to market, and it's the first, shall we say, commercial offering of this product. Um, peptide bioregulators. I said I'd come back to this and spend more time. There's a couple of reasons for that. They're particularly close to my heart, 
because um, I've been involved with them virtually, well, in fact, yes, since we first spoke to Professor Cavinson about them. So I've followed them through and now been involved with their uh, introduction into the West for the last four years. They are short-chain amino acids, and they act as gene switches, highly specific gene switches for your organs and glands. And they are called bioregulators because they are just that. They will switch on and switch off your gene. So for instance, thyreogen, which is the peptide mixture for the, thi for the thyroid, will treat both hyper and hypothyroidism. Similarly, bonomalo, which is for the bone marrow, will treat both anemia and polycythemia conditions. We have 21 different peptides. They, I won't try to go through them all, but I'll just give you an indication of what they, what they are. They cover things like the thymus, the thyroid, the brain, prostate, ovaries. I've mentioned already bone marrow, um, the, the eyes. Now, what happened? We've talked about it being 40 years. I've mentioned that they were a Russian military secret. I, my, my father was in the Royal Air Force. I will be honest and say I'm a bit of a therefore service brat, so service known. If I read something military in the papers, I tend, or see something military in the papers, I tend to read it. And I will ask you two questions. If you recall, go back 30, 35 years to Reagan era, era and the height of the Cold War, and you were in Russia, and you got called up, conscripted, where did you not want to be? And I would suggest one of two places both missile silo operators. One in a nuclear submarine, Russian nuclear submarine, quite a few of them ended up on the floor of the seabed, or land-based in a missile silo. And the problem the Russians found they had was the early aging of their operatives in these silos. And Professor Cavinson, yes, he was in the army, but his, he and his, commission, his team were commissioned with finding a solution basically to restore these young gentlemen to their age, their proper age, i.e. find a solution to the radiation sickness that they were suffering from. And that led to what we today offer as the food supplement the, for the thyroid and for the thymus. I mentioned being a service brat. Another article, again from 30 years ago, was a great fanfare made in the British press about a new US Army battle weapon, the laser rifle. We're no longer going to kill people because we're going to destroy their eyesight. And we'll be able to walk through them, and they won't know where we are, so they'll, they won't kill us. Hooray! Unfortunately for the American Army, Professor Cavinson came up with a solution. And today, you see that in the peptide bioregulator, Visolutin. It restores damage to the retina. And if anybody wants to see some photographs of treatment for retina pigmentosis, come to our stand and I can show you that. I can direct you to further information. And if anyone here is interested in going to PubMed and typing in Cavinson, I just suggest that you have plenty of paper in your printer because there's a lot of information on PubMed about his research and what he's done. He's got loads of patents from around the world, including the United States of America. So it's not something he's kept away or anything like that. The peptides are available as peptide bioregulators, I've said. A couple of instances, well, I'll just grab one here. And these are two stories I was told just before lunch by one of the doctors whom we sell peptides to. One concerns a 52-year-old female who's going through menopause. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and she decided she was childless, but hadn't found the right man, but wants to remain fertile. So they put her on the thyroid and the adrenal, which is for stress, peptides to help get her balanced, and then put her onto xenolutin, which is the ovary peptide. Now, when she started, she was going through the menopause, starting the menopause. She is no longer in the menopause. She remains f 
fer fully fertile. They've done the blood tests and everything else to prove it. That is down to those three peptides and their combination. Another example, go back a bit. Um, again, this one's concerned a 60-plus-year-old gentleman who actually had a filtration factor in his left ventricle down at 5%, which is, as you well know, pacemaker territory. He took the cello heart peptide bioregulator for a year, two tablets a day, every day. Had his general filtration test done. The factor was now 55%. In other words, the heart muscle had regrown itself. That's the potential power of the peptide bioregulators. They're also available in skin cream. That's called the Youth Gem skin cream. And there's four of them that are the same four that are in the range of six skin creams. Those four are endolutin for the pineal. I'll come back as to why. So sorry, um, the blood one which is vent for, for the blood, improve your blood flow and nutrition to, the, to your skin. The thymus, and we all heard yesterday about how important the thymus is in terms of immunity and everything like that. So obviously, for your immunity of your skin, that's the, that's the third one. Um, the endolutin is the pineal, and we're increasingly finding what it does in terms of the way that it extends human telomeres, the length of human telomeres. My animal research, human research, and there's now an American doctor who is con con conducting actual tests where he's taking people, he's measuring before, after, and his, the first patient he did it with in eight months went from, as a 58-year-old, went from an average telomere length that of a 60-year-old to that of a 28-year-old. And he's now got further trials going on to see if it can be re replicated with other people. And the fourth peptide that's in the youth gem range is the, one, is the cartilage, for basically for the collagen in your skin. So that is the power of the peptides. I'd just like to close on something, and I know people have talked about experience. I'm going to tell you a little story which is personal to me. I sometimes you have to bear with me because I do get a bit emotional about it, because it actually affects my daughter, not me. My daughter's 21, she's at university. And we have something in England called the Anthony Nolan Trust. And it was set up many years ago when a young boy of about five had leukemia. And they could not find anyone with the right blood match and everything else to donate bone marrow to this young child. And the child died. And the parents set up a trust in his name for people to register to so that if there was another child with leukemia, they could go down the register to find a match. In May of last year, my daughter got glandular fever. Kissing disease is a nickname for it. Now, that left her, yes, it left her listless, and the usual, all the usual symptoms with it. And as you know, it can take a long time to clear, and it can linger. So it's one of these things which very often, once you've had it, you've always got it. Okay, you're not suffering from it, but it can come back easily, and there's always a sign of it. Then, in October, sorry, I should say, so she got it, so I prescribed two packets, so that's 40 tablets, of the thymus peptide. She recovered quickly. Great. Fine, great. Didn't do anything more. Didn't have further blood tests. She'd had blood tests beforehand to prove that she had got, um, got, got uh, glandular fever. Then in October, she got a letter from the Anthony Nolan Trust. They found a match, and they wanted her to go in for further tests. And she told them that she'd had glandular fever in May and said, right, we will double check that you are clear and there's no sign. Because obviously the one thing we are not going to do is to give glandular fever to a young child suffering from leukemia. Because that literally will be, pardon the pun, by the kiss of death. She was clear. So in her case now, it's no longer bone marrow. They do stem cells. So she had three injections to activate, to so they could maximize her stem cells. She spent a day in a clinic when she harvested her stem cells. So that, she then donated them, and as far as we know, everything went well. We don't know how old the child was, but because she'd only been on the register for two years, because of her age, they would normally try to go for an older person, somebody over 30. 
They would nor and it, just statistically, it normally means that if you get somebody who's only been on it on the bone, on the Anthony Nolan register for a couple of years or less, there's no other match. They have nowhere else to go to. Now I don't know that that is the absolute truth, but the probability is that is the truth. So if my daughter had not made that transfer, that transfusion, that child, and probably a young child, because if it was an older child, they would have spent two days harvesting a bone marrow. But probably that young child of two or three would have died shortly after Christmas last year. So as I said to Professor Cavinson when I saw him in Geneva uh, a couple of months ago, not only do I, am I thanking him for his work on the peptide bioregulators and on the thymus, for how it cleared my daughter of glandular fever. But somewhere in the United Kingdom, there are parents with a young child of two, three years age, who is alive today, who would not be alive, but for the Vladinix thyroid peptide. Thank you very much. Yes, sorry, uh, this lady, yeah, in the blue, yes? Right, because it's a bioregulator, you can't overdose. So once your gland or organ is working as it should work, then you could or you can stop. Now, not everyone does so, because the condition that they've come from, for instance, I know of a case of a lady with severe adrenal fatigue who had had it for many years, who never left home, and she said she had lost so much of her life because she could not leave the house. She went on the glandocort adrenal peptide, and because of the effect it had on her, she has continued to take it day in, day out, because she's not prepared to run the slightest risk that there might be any regression, even though she says, yeah, okay, so it might not be necessary. But the way that the peptides work, they are telling our organ or our gland to work. They are not necessarily rectifying the cause of them not working or overworking in the first place. And that is why we talk about the need for a maintenance course. So in that sense, you could say the, peptide, the effect of the peptide regulates. It's a bit like an old spring-wound watch. You get it, it's running, but you have to rewind it from time to time, otherwise it will stop. So if you've stopped taking your peptides, which you know, the, the, uh, Professor Cavinson recommends that you do, do, you have your breaks because it's not necessary, over a period of four to six months, it will start doing that. And then you'll take a maintenance course to get it back upright. And that maintenance course is normally just one packet, that's 20 tablets over 10 days, of each of the peptides that you were taking in the original treatment course. But the original treatment course could have been four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks or more, depending upon the nature of, the, of your issue and the severity of it.